Hey everyone, you're watching a physio named Jonah, now that's this guy, where in today's video I want to take a look at the road to recovery someone goes through after they have surgery for their torn ACL. In the making of this video, I drew on my own clinical experience, what we learned back in physio school, as well as a variety of resources. I've gone ahead and linked those below or somewhere around this video, so you can check them out if you want to continue learning. My goal with this video is to give you an idea of what steps to expect along the road to recovery after going through surgery for your torn ACL. But before we start, here are two quick disclaimers. Number one, this video will not be an exhaustive list of every single step or exercise along the road to recovery. Instead, it's going to be a broad overview of what to expect with some components highlighted as we go through. Disclaimer number two, recovery after an ACL surgery will vary based on what type of surgery is performed. I will not be highlighting these differences, so always make sure to listen to your healthcare practitioners if you're going through this process, or if you're a healthcare practitioner, think about your patient, don't rely on any kind of list. I mean, that kind of goes for everything. If you want some quick background on what the surgical repair at ACL looks like before you start this video, go ahead and check out this video, which I'll link somewhere around here. It's animated, so it's not quite as disgusting as the live ones. Let's start at the very beginning because that's a very good place to start. In the first phase of recovery, which for today's video we'll classify as the first two weeks, our four main goals are decrease pain and swelling, increase range of motion, safely activate muscles, and get educated. Now, these are some pretty vague goals, if I uh, do say so myself, but that is intentional because, again, I'm going for a general recovery, not a specific protocol. When we talk about decreasing pain and swelling, or our first goal, a few things come to mind. Primarily, do whatever you have to do to make this thing stop hurting. What are you gonna do to help me? Physiotherapists will use techniques like soft tissue release or joint mobilization in order to get the joint moving again, as well as reduce pain and swelling at the same time. Machinery as well as the concept of temperature definitely shine in this first phase. Full knee wraps like game readies or the like are nice because they add a compression while also running cold water around the knee to help with pain and swelling. With that in mind though, the Game Ready Company is not returning my calls for sponsorship, so I would recommend that you use whatever brand you darn well please. In fact, I'm personally fond of a particular brand known as the Game Waiting. Alright guys, Jonah here, founder of the Game Waiting Technology. All you're going to need for this technique is a wrap such as this nice light purple towel. You're going to need access to snow and minus 16 to 20 temperatures and a bowl of ice cold water. So. First thing you do, you have your compression from the towel. You're then going to take snow and compress that all around the towel. Don't worry if your hand starts to go numb. That is therapeutic benefit as well. Once you have a nice even boating of snow on there, you're going to go ahead and grab that ice cold water and just dump that right over top of your game waiting. And just like that, it is going to be way colder than you ever anticipated. And that is the technique. This is a joke. Please don't do this. Electric modalities or currents have multiple uses here in this early phase. They can be used to help muscles contract or can be used to help relieve pain around the knee. And this is all going to depend just on how the electric current is used. But of course, we are talking about physio, so of course exercises are going to be crucial. In the early phases of ACL, there are a lot of different exercises and they're not all that complicated, so we're just going to go ahead and speed round them. Line them up, let's go. Isometric quads activation laying on a bed. A straight leg raise also laying on a bed. Ankle pumps where you move your ankle up and down a million times a day. Bend your knee back and forth with a sliding board. Bend your knee back and forth with a sliding board and using a towel for help because it's kind of hard. Calf raises. Just calf raises. Laying on your stomach and lifting your leg up straight off the bed to use your glute. Laying on your side and lifting your leg up off the bed, no need to side of your hip muscle. Practicing going from sitting to standing. Doing pendulums on a bike where you bend your knee back and forth, but don't bend your knee too far. The goal of all of these early exercises is to get moving, get your muscles contracting, make sure things don't stiffen up, and do it all in a safe way. 
There's a ton of different options as you can see, this was only a few of them, but the main goal is making sure you can do as much as you can safely so you can progress to more complex exercises more quickly. Last note here for phase one, bracing and crutches. Crutches are pretty much a guarantee after surgery, but what's gonna change is how long you use them for or whether or not you're allowed to use your surgical leg with the crutches early on when you can start, and that varies based on your surgeon. One way or another though, you're probably gonna be learning to walk with these bad boys. Bracing, however, is actually a more controversial topic. Which braces to use if using bracing at all is effective is something that's better suited to another video. Let's move on to phase two. Loosely, this phase could be anywhere from weeks two to about six. Our major goals for this phase are getting that range of motion as near full as possible, continue that strengthening, walk more normally, and proprioception as well as balance. Machinery or modalities from the first phase, like the game ready or wonderful alternatives or electric currents are going to likely still have a role, but they're going to start to get phased out as we can do more and more. The manual techniques that a physiotherapist will use in this phase are likely going to be more aggressive than they were in the first phase. That's because now we have less swelling, we probably have a little bit less pain, and now we want to get more and more range of motion. More time in this phase can now be spent on functional movements like walking. For walking in particular, this means taking time to try and adjust how you're shifting your weight back and forth to use both knees more evenly, as well as trying to get a good knee bend and straighten with every step. Quick physio tip here, don't move too quickly to go down to one crutch or no crutch. If you have to use two crutches for an extra week or two to keep your natural pace of walking going, that's totally fine. Hobbling around on one crutch or with no crutches with a poor pattern is not going to speed up your recovery. And now it's time for exercises. Normally here in this phase, you can start to progress your way through some balancing exercises. These can be as simple as starting to get comfortable balancing on one foot or standing on uneven surfaces with some small knee movements. Quality is so much more important than quantity, especially with balance exercises, so taking the time to do a few bouts well is way better than hustling through a ton of really sloppy repetitions. Whoa. It's also a lot safer. As far as strength goes, similar exercises from phase one are going to be built upon as we need to keep strengthening up that surgical leg. This can be accomplished through squeezing the quads after a sit to stand movement, squats within a pain free range, calf raises, short step ups, and some protocols will even advocate for the use of a leg press machine with some limited weight as well as range of motion restrictions applied. I haven't done this myself, but if you've got one around, get after it. Carefully with supervision. Don't, don't, don't get after it, that was the wrong terminology. Do it under safe circumstances. Hey, guess what time it is? It's time for phase three. And this arbitrary unit of measurement will be brought to you by none other than the weeks six to 12. Now in this phase, things definitely start to get a little more interesting. The main goals for phase three are move like you used to emphasize your balance retraining and really get onto that strengthening. Chances are that by this point, range of motion restrictions have hopefully mostly worked themselves out, so there should be a definite progression away from manual therapy or your modality usage. This is not to say that they won't happen, but it's really important to start using as much active exercise time and training around that knee as you possibly can. If not before now, definitely by this point, assistive devices like crutches are going to be phased out if the recovery is going fairly smoothly. Now your goal with walking then is going to become trying to make it as normal as possible. This means focusing on things like your rhythm, making sure you have full range of motion and equal weight distribution between your feet. But hopefully you've been practicing those things from before, so this is just an extension to continue. Exercises are going to get more interesting in this phase for sure, as light cycling or swimming may be an option for you as you start to get your cardiovascular fitness back up. There are also going to be progressions made to things you've been working on up until this point, like squats or balance exercises. Previous exercise focused around balance and strength, like squats or bouncing on uneven surfaces, can be made more challenging now, obviously under safe conditions. An exercise that fits well in this phase, if not earlier based on how the recovery is looking, 
is the single leg squat. Being able to control the bending of your surgical leg here is a great way to improve your proprioception at the same time as challenging the strength of that leg. Increasing the depth of the step ups that you started in the previous phase can also be a good example of a progression that you would see in this phase timeline. Finally, we finish with phase four. Now, I'm going to be considering this phase from 12 weeks onwards, which is a large amount of time because most ACL recoveries take about nine months. But honestly, this video is already getting fairly long, and at this point, the what your ACL rehab looks like is going to start to become very dependent on who you are as a person. What I mean by that is it's going to become more tailored to what the needs of the patient's knee are going to be after the recovery. With that in mind, some of the main goals of phase four are going to be preparing for return to sport and or work, being better than before, and keep going. Yeah, I think I actually out myself from earlier, which is not only impressive, it's also intentional. This is the phase where what the patient is going to have to do afterwards gets broken down and you train those individual components, trying to do them in the best way possible, which can mean doing things like running, jumping, twisting, and landing, because that's what they're going to have to do. Passive modalities are likely mostly out the window by this point, unless there are specific needs that have arisen during the rehab program, the goal is 100% on exercises and what we can be doing actively. Weightlifting or resistance training is a great way to rebuild strength, although it is obviously going to be dependent on what the patient's needs are. Plyometric training can be a hugely important factor as well, largely because of how important absorbing impact and then recreating it in another direction are in avoiding any further complications down the road, especially with sports. The single leg squat is a great example of an exercise that has a lot of room for progression here throughout this final phase. This is because of how much it challenges your ability to be on one leg and do functional movements on just that surgical leg. You can make it more challenging by adding body movements, head movements, jumping and landing on flat ground, jumping side to side, jumping and landing on something soft, or dropping off of something and then jumping immediately. There are a ton of ways to keep an exercise like this challenging for that surgical knee so you can keep progressing. Be better than before really means trying to do similar movement patterns or exercises from before but with better technique to avoid future complications. Let's get into the last point there of keep going. I put keep going as the final one on this list because of how long this rehab process is. Continuing strengthening, training, everything that goes along with rehab is really important following ACL surgery, but it's a long time. Nine months is a really long time. So when things get overwhelming, when it feels like it's too daunting to overcome, it's really important to remember that what you're doing will make a difference. It will pay off. So hey, keep that head up and keep training. Now here at the end of the video, I hope you have a better understanding of what to expect after going through an ACL surgery. There are lots of other great resources and videos out there. Again, I have links some below or I'll put some in the cards. They'll be available for you to keep going on and learning about this topic. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I do my best to get back to them there or maybe even make a video out of them. This one was in response to a commenter. So I really do try and tailor the content here around what you guys are looking for. And let's finish it up here, guys. Subscribe, thumbs up, bell on, all the good YouTube stuff. But most importantly, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.